Welcome to People Don't Think, Let's Start Today, a podcast hosted by Norb Savanasini, founder of AmericanEagle.com, and Al Edwards. Norb, we're at it again. How are you doing today? Good. It's a wonderful day. Thank God for this gift he gives us every day. That's why they call it the present. That's right. We say that every and, time. Uh, and Every day. If you start the day saying that, open the windows and uh, say it, then you'll feel better. I guarantee you. I agree. Well, friends, today is a very special show, and that is because we are going to talk about a book that has meant a lot to me and a lot of other people as well, and it's called Life's Harvest, and it's by a gentleman by the name of Norb Savanasini, my wonderful friend that I'm sitting next to here. And uh, he wrote this book uh, a number of years ago. There's no way in the world we're going to be able to get to anywhere near all the wisdom and uh, wonderful information in this book, but we're going to hit some highlights. And Nor, before I turn it over to you, I wanted to talk about, uh, you wrote a chapter called Why This Book? And I wanted to read that and then we can get started here. But Norb said he wrote this book because I want to leave something of value to my family, especially my grandchildren, and hoping that others might get some value from the collection of stories and quotes that I have accumulated throughout my lifetime. I hope these stories and quotes make you think, especially in today's world where independent thinking is not in vogue. We must all remember what Socrates said when he told us to believe in nothing until we have examined all possibilities to discard the senseless ones and keep the logical ones. He said, remember, you were given a mind to think, not to believe something just because someone told you. This is what separates humans from all other species. And that is absolutely so true. So tell us a little bit more, Norb, about what inspired you to write this book. Well, basically, it's, it's a book that I've collected a lot of different quotes and different sayings and different stories that actually uh, I started like 10, 15 years ago collecting this stuff. And one day I just put it all together and I had a couple of people here that helped me put it together and uh, I put it out. It's, it's not a book that was done to sell to the public. There was a book basically for my family and my friends. So um, I'm very proud of it. It's very nice. It it has helped a lot of people. A lot of people tell me. In fact, even today, somebody said that uh, that book really meant something to him. So uh, I'm happy I wrote it. But it's basically, uh, you know, quotes that reinforce what we talk about. And, and uh, you know, I didn't remember the, the thing that Al just said because... I wrote this many years ago, actually like five years ago, and uh, it's still, uh, I'm glad that I mentioned people don't think. And the thing about Socrates is very important because uh, I think that uh, it goes back to the idea that we discussed in a few other shows that, you know, the mind is like a sponge and whatever you put in it, it, it gives you back. And it's something that should be told and retold. And if you uh, think that just because somebody says something that that's the correct thing, well, most of the time it's probably not 100% correct. I'm not saying that some people won't tell you things that are correct, but check it out. Investigate it for yourself. Don't let that mind go to waste. I mean, it's, it's the most precious thing you have, your mind. Uh, you know, you don't know anything about your body. Right now, your body is doing hundreds of thousands of things chemically, electronically sending signals from your brain to your toes, to your fingers. You have no control over it. Nothing, nothing. The only thing you can really control in life is what you put into your brain. So make sure you use it because the rest of the body goes along with anything you basically do unless you really abuse it. So that's about it. I love it. You're exactly right. We always say on this show that uh, the things that matter the most in life were given to us for free. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting you said that because today I had a, a call from a really good friend that actually quoted the book to me, and uh, he's a very, very successful guy, and uh, he's from Iraq. He came to this country when he was 16 years old, extremely successful, has homes all over, and uh, just, just a wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, we were talking about, you know, coming to this country and, and seeing this country as just one of the greatest things he ever saw. And he came from a, a country that was torn by war and all kinds of problems. 
and he came to America and he saw the opportunity and uh, I believe he's around 60 now, so he's been here about 40 some years, but uh, he's made a very, very success out of himself, lost this country, extremely positive, one of the other few people that listen to the, this podcast, <laughs> and uh, he really likes it. So uh, I'm very proud of that, and uh, it's it's good that uh, you know if if somebody just takes a look at this country for what it is and looks at the opportunities, it's just phenomenal. And uh, we're burdened by negativity, 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 and uh, you have to really brush that outside. I've always said, and I said this to you when I was about 16 for the first time, I said people who are born in other countries are better Americans than those who are born here because, as Earl Nightingale said in The Strangest Secret, familiarity familiarity breeds contempt. And there's That's no a tough word, that familiarity that is a tough one. Word, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, mean, no, I, I agree, but it, it's true. It's true. It, it's very, very true. Absolutely. Well, let's dive into the book, uh, everybody. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be able to even touch the surface of what's in this amazing book, but I want to talk about some topics that are important to Norb. And the first chapter I want to talk about is a chapter entitled Love. And there's a wonderful quote from Leo Biscaglia, who is someone that we've mentioned before. And if you've never seen Leo Biscaglia, a lot of his videos are on YouTube and you should definitely check it out. But he said, love is life. And if you miss love, you miss life. So, Norb, what, what would you say, what part has love played in your life along the way? Well, I think it's the love, uh, and I think it's a, if you look at love as the wonder of uh, being in love, you know, when you're in love, you're just uh, happy and, and everything looks clear and bright. And if you apply that type of, of mindset to every day, you love life. And, uh, you know, that's about as well as I can explain it. One of the things about love, I think, is that um, sense of wonder that you've always had. You've never lost your childlike sense of wonder about things. And I was listening. I say this all the time. I was listening to Zig Ziglar. I should get a royalty for plugging him so much. And he was on a plane one time and there was a young family coming on, a mom and a couple of little kids. And there was about a four year old girl who got on the plane and she looked into the cockpit and then she looked all the way down the long fuselage and she put her hands on her knees and all she could say was, wow. She was like blown away by this amazing machine. And I think part of loving life is never getting rid of that sense of wonder like you've always had. And, and I share that too. We seem to have that in common. No, sure. and it is. You know, I remember the first time that I actually went into a 747 which was many years ago. And uh, I was working for an insurance company and, and I had a, a, uh, a seat up in the front of the plane. And when I looked at the back of the plane from the front, I said, how is this thing gonna fly? You know, <laughs> it's just, this is so incredible. But when you think about it, you know, isn't our life a lot like that plane is that you have to have faith and you have to have those engines running correctly and you have to figure out the weight and and thinking positive i think has a lot of a lot of parallels to that because uh, the engineers if they weren't positive that this thing would fly there'd be a lot of dead people around that's you know? very true yeah, because that 747 carries a lot of people <laughs> Yeah, it is amazing that those those things can get off the ground and actually fly through the oh, air. Yeah, exactly. It uh, goes against every logical notion you might have in your mind about about that. Norb, you've shared your inspiration and and uh, and your wisdom and your enthusiasm and your knowledge with a lot of people, uh, and you've had a great influence on a lot of people. Uh, and to me, that's a that's a form of love. What does that mean to you that you when you do these things throughout your life that you've been doing and continue to do? How, how is that a form of love, would you say? Well, you know, I, I don't know if it's something that's planned. Uh, I think that if you think positively, and, and you know, now, you know, Al is talking about me. I want to talk about him a little bit. Uh, where we were coming over here to the studio, uh, he's walking around and, and saying hi to everybody, smiling with everybody. And that's just part of, of Al's nature. And I, I, I hope it's, it's part of my nature too, but I think that's part of being positive is just, you know, if, if you just smile and say hi to people, uh, 
they smile back and, and smile at you and you feel good. You, you know, it's, it's not something that I, I don't think Al or I do it because we want to do that to get that response. We do it because it's just, obviously we do the show. And by now, if you've heard a few of these, you know that uh, we believe in this. So we're, we basically practice it on a daily hourly basis. Just be, be nice. You know, just be nice. You know, I think I mentioned this before. I, I went to a restaurant in Oregon, in uh, Portland, which is a beautiful, beautiful city. And we went to a restaurant with my wife, and, and they had a big sign that it said, be nice or get out. <laughs> and I always thought, that's a great thing to put in a restaurant. You know, because you go to some restaurants and people behave like animals. You know, they're not, they're not happy. They didn't get their ketchup or just stupid stuff. So just be nice, you know, even if you need more ketchup, be nice about asking for it. And uh, that's it. That's right. What do they say? You can get more uh, bees with ketchup than you can with vinegar? Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is? Or mustard. Or mustard. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have a sign in my office that I got from you the idea from you, and it says, um, smile, it's contagious. Oh, yeah, 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 right. And it really is true. Yeah, and this country used to have something really interesting, too, that, uh, uh, you know, used to go to stores, and almost 50% of the stores had a sign that said, courtesy is contagious. And I always thought, gee, you know, that's a nice thing to say, courtesy is contagious. And it is. If you're courteous to somebody, you usually get it, get it back. And, and not that you want that, but it's just a nice life if that happens. You know, open a door for people. Just just be nice, you know? It's a perfect example, once again, of you will get back what you put out. Absolutely. Life. Well, it's the, like the mind, you know? Yeah. Positive thoughts, the same thing. And to me, these are all forms of love. You know, it's a form of love to be kind to someone, to open a door, to be courteous. It really is a form of love, and I think that's what your your chapter was about. The uh, The next thing I want to talk about is the next chapter was called about business. And few people have had as much business experience as Norb. He's had many, many successful businesses along the way and uh, really knows how to uh, treat people and get a business going. And, and even he has turned around a lot of businesses that he has bought. And there was a great quote in the book from Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great transcendentalist, who was actually a, a great favorite of mine. I never thought a guy like Emerson would talk about business or capitalism, but here's what he said. Doing well is the result of doing good, and that's what capitalism is all about. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting because uh, Henry Ford said the same thing, that uh, the result of being successful is the result of doing a good job. And uh, when you're positive about doing your job, I don't care what it is, uh, you become successful. What do you think? I, I heard this recently. Uh, a guy said that uh, people think, oh, I'm successful after I've achieved a certain amount of money or a certain amount of fame or a certain position at work or whatever. And I heard a guy say, I was successful when I was dead broke. Well, you know, it's kind of funny going back to this, the gentleman that called me today. Uh, he basically came as, as a foreigner here. And, and uh, I did too, actually. I was a little younger than he was. But you know, one of the things when you, what happens when you, when you come to this country, especially from a country that uh, has different sports and a different language, is that you don't know anything. I mean, I, I was, I think I was in this country maybe 12 years before I understood anything about baseball. And, and now I love baseball, by the way. I think it's probably, I think it's the best game there is because it doesn't have any time involved you have to get you know the, the three outs and then like yogi Berra said you know it's not over till the fat lady sings <laughs> right <laughs> and he was referring to a very famous lady that you probably never heard of kate smith who also is on youtube and sang the greatest uh song ever written should be the the, the national anthem called god bless america it's really an interesting thing because when we came to this country, we're talking about the parallels. You know, you don't know the sports. I mean, football. Football was, and it's funny because we both had the same feeling. It was the most stupid thing to watch this bunch of guys running and talking to each other before making the next play. And we didn't understand anything. And 
we, we both of us grew up with uh, with soccer and we understood it and uh, so we didn't have that you know and and i went to high school and i i, I hate to say this because it sounds crazy I, I never went to a football game in high school i i I went to a few basketball games, but I worked. You had three jobs. You didn't have time yeah, to uh, go to jobs. a football and, and game. And that was my social life. My social life was, you know, delivering papers, working in a bike store, working in a, in a clothing store. And I enjoyed that. And my friends were actually adults. They weren't, you know, children my age. And, and he did the same thing, by the way. He, he went to school here and uh, uh, he worked. And, and we met, actually, he was selling... Uh, film, you know, with a, with a VHS cassettes. For you people who don't know what VHS cassettes were, it was an old method of watching movies. Videotape. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, from that he started selling to little supermarkets, and, and now he's got a huge business with warehouses all over the country, and uh, just an extremely successful guy. And uh, we share a lot of the same concepts, and, and we call each other for advice. Uh, mostly business, but a lot of times it's about life advices. And uh, thinking positive is just part of his makeup also. I mean, he doesn't know how not to think positively. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think a common strain, if you will, about this quote from Emerson is that uh, doing well is a result of doing good. That's what capitalism is all about. You, you just can't help but win <clears throat> if you're helping people and you're doing good for someone else. I remember uh, I heard a quote one time that said, you'll always get what you want in life as long as you help other people get what they want first. And I think that's very true of business. If you produce something and make someone else's life better, you're going to be a success. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, one of the interesting things, and, and uh, you know, thinking positive uh, encompasses all facets of life. And uh, you become a philosopher about everything. And, uh, you know, a producer, which is what Emerson basically was talking about, is uh, the driving force of any country or, or all economies. There's only two kinds of people in the world, only two. The people who produce and the people who live off of the producers. You're in one camp or in the other. There are no exceptions. And once you learn that, you become kind of a person who looks at life a little differently. Am I a producer? Uh, you know, when I was young uh, in, in southern Indiana, uh, there was a couple of older guys that I really loved, gave me best advice of anybody. One of them says, you know, the purpose of a person should be to leave this earth a little better than what he found it in. And if you follow that, I think that you'll be extremely happy because that's being very positive. I, w I was giggling because you said there are two things that I remind was reminded about another podcast where you said your father told you this. There's two of the easiest things to do in life. One was to spend money and the second was to be a critic. And both of those are non-productive items. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I thought this was great. I, I never thought Emerson would uh, comment on capitalism, but of course, in his time in the 19th century, it certainly was going on strongly. But that notion of doing good for another person, I think is really at the core of why a lot of businesses do well. There's no question about it. Well, I, I think doing well, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. It's a proven fact that doing things for other people increases your life, uh, makes you a happier person. It's just that you just, you just feel better. Uh, my father came to this country and he worked for a gentleman that was just an incredible guy. And, and I think, I don't know if I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. I, I was at a table having lunch with my dad and this gentleman. And, and he, he was a, just a really, really incredible guy, very successful. And one time he looked at me and he told me, he asked me, do you know when you do the right thing? And, and I was maybe 14, 15, and, and I, I didn't know, you know, I, I just looked at him and he says, when you feel good about it, and, and you know, it's, it's so simple that it's just ridiculous. And uh, every one of us 
whenever we do something well and good, you just feel good. That's, that's what separates us from the animals. If you just try to live your life like that, you'll be a much, much more happier and successful person. It's definitely true. I think we all have our own built-in inner compass, like you said. Absolutely. It's a great barometer. If you feel good about something, it was a good thing, right, right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Moving on to the life chapter, uh, and I know Norb's got a couple other things he wants to talk about, but there's a chapter called Life, and he makes an analogy, which is really interesting, about a bank and money. He said, if you were given $86,400 put into your bank, what would you do with it? And he goes on a little bit about it. But the point of that chapter is that every day we are each given 86,400 seconds. And time turns out it's much more valuable than money for sure. So talk about that concept, Norb, 86,400 <laughs> seconds that we all have. I mean, when you get older, you, you realize that uh, uh, time is valuable and it was much more valuable than what you gave it credit for. Uh, you know, Napoleon conquered most of Europe at one time, and, and he was in the Palace of Versailles with Josephine, and he looked at Versailles, the, the beautiful gardens, and it said, Josephine, I can give you anything you want except time. So time is a very precious thing. It's only there for you, and uh, you better enjoy it. Don't don't mess it up. It it really is limited. And I think as people get older, they begin to understand that much, much more on an emotional level. I heard someone say one time, waste anything but time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because time's the one resource we cannot get back. Right, right, right. Um, you had a couple of things, Norb, you wanted to talk about? Well, you know, there's a couple of things that I, I read that is kind of interesting. One of them is, is a story about, and, and it, you know, today we live in such a negative world that it's really kind of, I hate the word scary, but my God, you know, everything you hear is inflation and nuclear war and, and just everything's, and the media is just, obviously none of these people produce anything. So the easiest thing to do is just uh, open their mouth and spill out their guts about how bad things are, because if things were good, you know, there's no money involved to making uh, to make money when things are good. So you got to create problems and and do things. But there was once a psychology professor that walked around his classroom, and he was holding a glass of water, and he straightened out his arm and he asked the people, "How heavy you think that this glass of water is?" And the students started to shout out, "You know, four ounces, one pound." And he says, "No, no, no." The absolute weight of this glass isn't what matters while I'm holding it. It's rather the amount of time that I hold onto that it makes an impact. If I hold it for two minutes, it doesn't feel much like much of a burden. If I hold it for an hour, you know, my arm's getting tired. If I hold it for an entire day, my muscles will cramp and feel numb and paralyzed with pain making me feel miserable and unable to think about anything aside from the pain that I'm in. Basically, that's what pessimism is, and that's why pos positive mental attitude is very important. Don't hold that glass of water for more than two minutes because it'll destroy your life, it'll destroy your psyche, your, your physical being. So uh, I just thought I'd share that story with you. I thought it was pretty good. I love that. And uh, it reminds me of a, an expression someone once said that acid destroys the vessel in which it is contained. So hanging on to that anger, that bitterness, that resentment is just like holding that glass for a whole day. It eventually just paralyzes you, doesn't it? Right, right, right. And, and our mind, uh, unluckily, is not like that glass because most acids do not affect glass. Right. But our, uh, uh, you know, that acid of, of negativism will eat up your brain, your soul, everything. And, and, and it reflects when you're dealing with other people. Uh, in fact, people will want to run away from you. You're just like, uh, you know, two magnets that are uh, similar and they repel each other. So, right. Yeah. 
this is a perfect segue to the next chapter that I wanted to talk about, and, and it's called uh, Wisdom. And this is one, boy, that really hit me hard because, uh, as we said in an earlier podcast, everyone is looking for the magical garden over the mountain, and they don't think about the roses right in front of them. And you put a quote in there, Norb, it says, most of us don't know about happiness until it's over. Yeah, you know, it's a, uh, a thing about being able to enjoy life at its fullest, whatever you do. Because, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how to say this quote, and I, I love quotes, but this one, you'll get the gist of it. Uh, they say life is like a book that you're writing, but you can't go back to rewrite. Whatever happens, it's written. So uh, appreciate everything you do, you know. I, I had a, a, uh, a very, very long and, and very happy marriage, and my, my wife passed away, and I, I miss her. Uh, every day, and uh, the thing that I regret the most, not that we didn't enjoy ourselves a lot, you think back whether, gee, you know, I should have appreciated it more while it was happening, and all the things we did together, all the travels we did, all the, uh, the joys, the, the children, the grandchildren. So, yeah, it's, it's very, very important to uh, really appreciate life, but it's it's interesting that uh, you know most people just wake up in the morning and uh, just you know do the usual things they do every day. They don't think about gee, this is really nice. You know, fall is is uh, here in Chicago area, and for some reason or other, the trees are just incredibly beautiful this year. And usually they're not, but this year they're just spectacular. And, you know, it's something to enjoy. And, and I know that there's going to be snow falling. And, and I actually feel sorry for people that don't have that joy of, of looking at these incredible shades of reds and greens and yellows, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's very, very important to, to just enjoy uh, every moment. I've often said I, th I think that's a fundamental flaw of human beings that we're all born with because we're only here for a certain amount of time. And we don't have the perspective to really, like you said, understand the present moment and the power and the beauty of the present moment. I think uh, this has happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people. You know, you'll go to a funeral, for example, and no one talks about how neat the person's desk was. They don't talk about, you know, their shoes. They always talk about the important things in life, what kind of person they were, how they touched them, the impact they had. And I think in times like those, people get the big picture. And then they leave the funeral home and two blocks later, they get angry because Wendy's is out of their French fries or something like that. We go right back into not being able to see the big picture again. So I think reminding all of us, like you just beautifully did, Nora, about smelling the roses right in front of you and not waiting for the magical garden over the mountain. Yeah, it's, it's just that easy. It's, we all have this thing called life. And we're given this this gift for, you know, the average age of, of 79, 80 years worldwide in, in developed countries. And, you know, what we do in that time is, is important. And I think the chore is going back to that uh, gentleman that told me, leave the world a little better than how you found it. And that's the key. Absolutely. And that ties into our last chapter that I want to talk about called Wisdom. And this is a quote from Winston Churchill, and he said, A pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. And, and I think that goes back to the, the foreigner that comes to this country, to what's a difficulty for the average American is an opportunity for this guy that doesn't know any better <laughs> because... He's never had a refrigerator full of food and, and, uh, or a supermarket where you could go and, and get, you know, you're talking about ketchup, you know, 10 different brands of ketchup and, and, and uh, 10 different kinds of butter and, and uh, organic everything if you wanted and all the cuts of meat. I mean, for him, this is, oh my God, uh, you know. So it's, again, familiarity breeds contempt. And uh, when you have everything, 
you really don't know uh, what you have. There's no question. There's no question. Yeah. Well, friends, we've come to the end of another podcast. Um, I just always sum these up by saying we hope that you enjoyed what we have to say. We hope that you learned something. We hope that you, most importantly, took something into your heart on an emotional level that maybe helped you change something in your life or be a different person or go after something that you want to do. That's really what all this is about. So, Norb, thank you as always. We appreciate you. Thank you, Al. Tremendous. Thank you very much. And until next time, this is Al Edwards for Norb Savanasini saying bye-bye for now. <laughs>